When it comes to mixed colour temperatures, there are more obvious situations in life where this can occur, and more subtle ones that we don't tend to think about. Earlier, we briefly talked about sunlight hitting the Earth's atmosphere and scattering blue light. This is what we see as blue sky, and this is also the light that is filling in shadows on a sunny day. We know this on our Kelvin scale as shade, and this can be found on the higher end of the scale, even going above 10,000 Kelvin, depending on the time of day and weather conditions. We can take a closer look at this using our colour meter that we used previously. Here we have an afternoon sun on a winter's day. Although the sun isn't as high in the sky as it would be in summer, we should still expect a temperature of around 5,600 Kelvin. So let's take a reading of the sun. Five thousand four hundred Kelvin. Notice that part of the garden is in shade. This means the sun isn't hitting this area, but the sky is. So we'll tuck ourselves out of the way of the sun and take a colour reading of the light falling from the sky above. Eight thousand one hundred and ten Kelvin. Our sun and sky are two different colour temperatures. It seems obvious when you think about it, just by looking at the colours of each source of light. And we can even see it clearly in the close-ups of our colour meter. But when lighting an image, it's not something we always consider. If we want a realistic image using our own lighting, we need to keep this information in mind, especially when we're shooting in an area that has an obvious exposure to both sun and open sky. Here, we have our subject sat behind a large window, looking outside, with the blinds semi-closed to create some shadow. We used a daylight balanced, 5600 Kelvin, point source light with a Fresnel lens, to push a hard light through the window and into the room, representing the sun. Our camera's colour temperature has been set to 5600 Kelvin, to balance for our light. But without any fill light, and some very dark shadows, what we're actually telling our audience through the lighting is that our subject can barely see any sky from where he is. This doesn't really make sense, as he's sitting in front of a pretty large looking window. So rather than the sun, this kind of just looks like what it is. A light, placed off camera, lighting the scene. Let's say we want to go for the feeling of an afternoon winter sun. Similar to the situation we measured earlier. So our light, representing the sun, is already in a relatively accurate position, lower down in the sky. We just need to add a fill light to represent the sky and to fill in our shadows. We set up some bleached muslin above the window and bounce the light panel's Gemini into it, set to the same colour temperature as our sunlight, 5600 Kelvin. Now the image makes much more sense, but since our fill light, or skylight, is the same colour temperature as our sun, it feels more like sunset, or sunrise. So let's push up the Kelvin on our light panels unit, making our skylight bounce cooler, and more representative of the sky on a winter's afternoon. Combined with the positioning and qualities of our lights, we've implied a very particular scenario by subtly mixing two colour temperatures together. The low winter sun we wanted to represent with our lighting looks and feels much more realistic than if we had stuck to the same colour temperatures for each light, and is now emulating how colour temperature works naturally. Mixing colour temperatures can also be achieved in a more pronounced way. Here, we have our subject lying down on a sofa, looking toward a window, and then turning his head to look into the room. We used three lights to achieve this, 
and along with different qualities and different exposure values between these three lights, we've also used two different colour temperatures to represent the colour of two different light sources, and in doing so, creating a very stylistic contrast. We have a very cool soft light camera left to represent evening skylight coming in through a window. We have a very warm hard light above our subject's head to represent a tabletop lamp or other household bulb. And we have a very warm, soft, indirect light camera right to represent some ambient bounce in the scene, perhaps coming from an open doorway. We set up a light panel's Gemini in a snap bag softbox to our subject's right to represent a soft, cold evening window light. Above his head, we used a pocket-sized LED panel directed onto his head and past the sofa, representing the tabletop lamp. Finally, we had a second light panel's Gemini unit across the room to his left, bouncing from a white bedsheet to represent the open doorway. But to get this look, we had to tweak both colour temperature and white balance to get the colours we wanted in the image. Here's what our clip originally looked like after we'd set up our lighting. This looks a little bit different to the final image. We'd set our lamp light to 3200 Kelvin, our bounce light to 3200 Kelvin, and our window light to 10,000 Kelvin, with the intention of creating a contrast between the evening skylight and household bulb light. But with our camera white balanced to 3200 Kelvin, our warmer lights are too neutral, and our evening window light is a bit too cold. So let's try and find a middle ground by pushing our camera's white balance up and adding some more warmth to the image. We landed on 5480 Kelvin. Our warmer lights are looking perfect with a stylistic, saturated look. But since we've also taken our balance a bit closer to our window light, the window light is no longer appearing as cold as we'd like it to, even with it set to 10,000 Kelvin. So we need a way to cool it down even further practically. Gels are transparent coloured sheets, used to alter the colour or colour temperature of a light. A colour correction gel can come in different strengths, depending on the temperature change required. For example, a full CTB, or colour temperature blue gel, will convert a 3200K tungsten fixture to around 5600K daylight. A full CTO, or colour temperature orange gel, will do the opposite and convert a 5600K daylight fixture to around 3200K tungsten. These values can vary between gel manufacturers, but this is the basic way that gels work. Now we don't actually need to physically put a gel in front of our light, since the light panel's Gemini has this function built in. By utilising the RGB function of the LED panel, the Gemini can emulate different correction gels on both daylight and tungsten lights. So to get a colder look back on our subject, we put a full CTB gel on top of 5600 Kelvin. Using the gel pushed up the colour temperature of our light even further than 10,000 Kelvin, giving us the feeling of a cold evening sky coming through a window, as well as creating a colour contrast with the warmer lights in our image. With our camera's white balance set to 5480 Kelvin, we were able to strike the balance we needed between the two colour temperatures in the scene, ensuring both warm and cold temperatures formed a stylistic, saturated contrast, whilst emulating the light sources we wanted to represent. RGB lighting can be extremely useful in the flexibility it gives us, digital gels being one such example. You can watch the entire five-part series now with no wait, featuring an exclusive section not available on YouTube by downloading the whole 46-minute mini-core from robellescinematography.com forward slash downloads for just £15. 
You can also stream the whole tutorial by becoming a patron. In part 5, we'll take a look at RGB lighting and how we can use it to expand on our lighting abilities. Part 3 is exclusive to the full downloadable version of the Lighting with Colour mini course. The Lighting with Colour series is colour graded using Dehancer. Use my code Rob Ellis to get 10% off. Support my channel on Patreon and get extra lighting and shoot breakdowns, along with early, ad free YouTube videos. I use music from AudioSocket in my videos. Click my referral link in the video description and use the code Rob Ellis when you sign up for a free month of the best and most diverse range of stock music available. Use my code Rob Ellis over at Zyro to get up to 72% off your website or storefront with three extra months free, along with a custom domain for a year. I use Artgrid for stock footage. Get an extra two months free when you sign up using the link in the video description.